Now that we have a feel for what personas are, let's look at the steps for creating one. Now, one of the advantages of personas are that they're very lightweight. In fact, at a minimum, every persona really only needs to have a name. This is a simple first name that makes it easier for the team to refer to the persona in conversation. A photo. We include photos because while at the beginning, the team may not always remember the names of the persona, they will always recognize photos. As humans, we're wired to be very visual animals. So a great way to reinforce a concept with your team is to associate it with an image. Personas also include the role of the user inside of the product. In the case of our CD kiosk, this may be a customer or service person. And finally, each persona includes a brief description of that user. Now, I want to be clear that this description shouldn't necessarily focus on what the user is doing with the product, but rather, what do they want to get out of it? Specifically, what is their motivation for using it? Just as we saw when we began creating user stories, in the context of personas, we're often more interested in the why rather than the how. Now that we have a feel for the types of details that go into personas, let's look at creating a few of our own. Now, there are no shortage of persona templates available for free online, but my favorite is this template by Roman Pitchler of www.romanpitchler.com. I like this template because, well, first of all, it's simple. There are only three columns, which gives you a lot of freedom to decide which details make sense for which personas and which don't. And I also like this template because it has a dedicated space for goals. This forces us to think about what is the motivation that each persona has for using our system. This allows us to raise above the what and the how of each role working with our product to really get at the why they would be working with the product in the first place. Now this template is available online for free and I'll be providing a link at the end of this module where you can download it. So let's begin with one of the roles from our product. We'll begin with our customer role, who is the user who is actually interested in ripping music from their CDs to their portable device. We'll give this role a name, in this case, Susie, and we'll give this person a picture so the team can more easily relate to her. Now, I want to call out a few subtleties about the picture before we move on. First of all, notice that this is a picture of a real person, not a cartoon or a clip art. It's very important to use a photo of a real person as it will be much easier for the team to relate to than a cartoon and it will help reinforce to the team that this persona represents an actual real person who will be interacting with our product. Now in addition, while I simply could have used a headshot of a girl for this photo, I specifically wanted a picture of a girl listening to music on a portable device through their headphones. While at a bare minimum, a headshot is a great place to start, your personas will carry much more weight if you can actually find an image of that person in a setting or doing an action that reinforces their role in the system. Since the team is most likely to anchor on the photo portion of the persona first, this will help create connections early on of what the role was trying to accomplish with the system. Finally, I want to call out her expression. Expressions in images are worth a thousand words. In this case, we can see that Susie is very happy and seems to be enjoying her music on her device. We want to be careful that we choose an image of a person whose expression matches how they should feel in the product. In this case, Susie has ripped all of her CDs to her device and she's very happy about it. On the other hand, if we had chosen an image of a young girl holding CDs, we wouldn't want the girl to look happy in the image because the whole point of this product is she wants to get rid of her CDs. So in that case, we would want it to show an image of frustration or consternation. Choosing an image whose expression matches that user's mood in the product is a great way to really enforce to the team what their role in the product should be. Now as far as tracking down images, simply searching images for an image that matches the description of what you expect your persona to look like is usually more than sufficient for any team. In this case, I may search for girl music or girl headphones and could have found something very relevant. If you're looking for more high quality images, Flickr's Creative Common Pools, or stock photo sites like iStockPhoto or Fatalia.com is a great place to start as they can give you access to professionally produced high resolution images for a reasonable price. This particular image is from Fotalia. 
However, as I said, for most teams, a simple trip down Google Images will more than suffice for grabbing the images for your personas. Next, we move on to the details. For this particular case, we'll keep our persona light, and our details will include only a role and a description. In this case, the role is the customer, which represents the role this persona represents inside of the system, and the description, which represents what we want this persona to do. In this case, Susie wants to rip her CDs so she no longer has to carry them or separate device to enjoy her music. Now, I've pulled this description from the original customer epic that described how users would be ripping their CDs to the device and, more importantly, why they would be ripping their CDs to the device. You'll want to keep your description section light so it's easy for the team to read without becoming overwhelmed and it doesn't lose focus. If you're struggling to create a description, a great place to start is some of the first stories that you came up with for that role. Your first stories are likely the most important ones that truly capture the essence of the role in the system, so that's a great place to start. Finally, we'll add a goal. Now, I mentioned previously how much I like sound bites for personas, so when I'm using this template, I like to put the sound bite in the goal column. The soundbite gives us a great and succinct way to sum up what that role is trying to accomplish in the system. In this case, Susie just wants to get rid of her CDs. This gives us a very easy to remember phrase that the team can hang on to that really captures what the persona is after. The goal also acts as a great litmus test when evaluating stories that seem to be on the edge of being frivolous that may or may not really contribute to that roles in the system. If you have a story that targets a particular role but doesn't really seem to contribute to that role's goal, that's a good indicator that the story is frivolous and should either be prioritized low or discarded entirely. Let's try another. Next, we'll build a persona for our service person role. We'll give this role a name, Stan, and we'll create a picture that represents Stan. Now we'll fill in some details. Stan's role in the system is a service person, and the description is that Stan wants to keep the kiosk running smoothly and easily perform routine maintenance on it. Now Stan's goal with the system is he just wants to be home by dinner. This is a great way to capture with the team that Stan's driving goal with the system is convenience. Now I intentionally made this soundbite a bit cheeky because the humorous twist will make it easier for the team to remember when they think of Stan. However, even though the soundbite is a bit cheeky, it still captures succinctly what Stan's goal in the system is. Stan wants convenience, and Stan wants to easily be able to perform maintenance on the system. Now that we have a few personas under our belt, let's look at two common pitfalls that many teams tend to fall into when they begin using personas. One of the first temptations many teams have is to use photos of celebrities for their headshots of the persona. However, this is almost always a bad idea as photos of celebrities tend to come with preconceived notions for the team. You'll want to start with a blank slate when creating personas and using a photo of a rock star or a movie star that the team may already have opinions or preconceived notions of limits the value of that persona because it'll be difficult for the team to shake any subtle biases that they may already have in their minds of that individual. In addition, this also prevents the personas from becoming believable. You want the team to be able to eventually believe that the person in that picture is Susie. If instead the picture is actually of a well-known celebrity, that's never going to happen. The other pitfall that teams often fall into is narrowly defining the backstory. Now, ironically, this actually happens when a team adds too much information to the description or the demographic section of the personas. While the more information that we add to the description or the demographic section of a persona can help create a richer backstory, they also serve to limit that backstory. One of the advantages of keeping the personas lightweight is that they leave a little imagination to the team, which lets the team fill in the gaps of the persona's backstory as we learn more about both the role and the product. If you add too much information to the description or to the demographics at the beginning, this can too narrowly define the backstory of that persona and prevent it from growing as we learn more about the role and the product. We want the persona to expand the role, not to limit it.